Leadermagic.com. Hey, Coach. Uh, watching the film, what were the key things that you noticed from uh, last night's game? Well, you know, the, the two biggest things were, uh, you know, the free throw game, right, where we were minus, not, minus 10. And then, uh, you know, playing inside out, you know, the ball didn't hit the paint. There were 108 possessions. Uh, the ball hit the paint 53 times, didn't hit it 55 times. And when those are the, when that's the ratio, you're just not going to get good offense. So uh, that's what we spent the majority of time on today. Uh, it's a variety of things. It's never one specific reason the ball doesn't hit the paint. Uh, but and and they did a good job. I'm I'm you know you have to give them credit also. Oklahoma City they had a good plan, and they executed it well. Uh, but we've got to get back to getting the ball going towards the basket and into the paint. Josh Robbins, The Athletic. Steve, I'm curious how you feel like the the any lineups in which Markel and Cole play together have performed. Uh, I mean, it's it's hard because, you know, we haven't been as organized because we haven't, to be honest, we haven't done it much in practice, you know, so, um, you know, it hasn't been great so far. Part of that, but I, I still think that down the road, it's something that we'll get to. It's just, uh, you know, again, I mean, what, what I, my, my vision of this is to get Cole more comfortable, um, you know, playing one position. And it's been a lot. You know, I actually just met with him before I came in. It's a lot to ask of him. And, uh, you know, playing a position where he's playing more off the ball, which he's not comfortable with. And then the same part of it is at the defensive end. You know, you're asking one of the two uh, to play a different type defensive game, too. So, uh, you know, so far, it, I mean, again, because of the injuries, we've gone to it. And, uh, you know, it's, it's something that eventually, we, to me, we'll, we'll get to. Um, it's just we haven't had enough time to work on it. That's all. That, that feeds into a follow-up question, if you don't mind. How cognizant are you in terms of the rookies' long-term development to try not to make them or put them in positions where they have to do too much too soon? I think it's a huge deal because, uh, like, they, you know, look, I think you guys understand this is a guy like him, he got, you know, it's always the same thing. They have a lot of people telling them how to play, you know. Uh, and outside of the coaching staff, none of those people are watching film. And I just told them this. I learned a lot last night from watching the game film the second time. So we just watched an edit with Lionel that I think can help him a lot. Uh, this poor kid has had no summer league. He had no summer. He had no September workouts. And he's a perfectionist and he's putting a lot of pressure on himself. And the one other thing I told him was like, you know, he's one of those guys, he'll do three good things and one bad thing. And he remembers the bad thing, you know? So um, he's a good player. I think he's going to have a terrific year and uh, it's a different world now. I mean, I know he played at North Carolina and I love college basketball too, but like the ACC to the NBA is not a small step. So, uh, you know, you got to do it step by step. And to be more specific, I think it's important that they get into a, a rhythm with their teammates uh, where they feel good about things and they're playing well at both ends of the floor. And, and then, you know, you build on it from there. Unfortunately, you know, because we have taken these injuries, you know, it's, 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 it's made it tougher. You know, I mean, he's playing a position that he's barely practiced. Dan Savage, OrlandoMagic.com. Cliff, what were you guys able to do in practice today? And uh, how much was, how much, if any, was Evan able to do? Yeah, Evan wasn't able to participate uh, at all today. Um, you know, we did more offense uh, to try to get back to the ball getting into the paint. And then, uh, you know, the defensive part was more walkthrough, uh, correction, and film and uh again with uh you know the the condensed schedule i just don't think we can be in there banging and uh, we're gonna have to do a lot of this more organizationally 
Uh, and I think we have the right kind of team to learn from film and, and walkthroughs and, and that we can improve that way. Roy Perry, Orlando Sentinel. Steve, obviously you've talked a lot about your, your on-ball defense and, you know, Cleveland's going to come in for a couple games and they're really good with those guards. How, how concerned are you with what they're able to do with the ball and, you know, what are some keys to, to beating Cleveland? Yeah, well, those were two of the things today. Um, that, you know, it's going to start with not turning the ball over. You know, they're first in the NBA in points off turnovers. Uh, you know, Sexton, obviously, uh, Exum, uh, Garland. Those guys, you know, Drummond anchoring the defense. You know, Larry Nance Jr. is a terrific defender, uh, very versatile. So um, it's going to start with that. You know, what, what we talked to about today was some of their interior things where, you know, Drummond is just such a factor at both ends of the floor. And then what you talked about is, you know, the, the uh, sixth and Garland pick and rolls uh, in individual defense. One thing I liked a lot last night was we were much better with our individual and help defense, you know, which had been a problem. And, uh, you know, our guys were a lot better last night. You know, I showed them clips. We had some really good, sequences of one-on-one -on -one plays and help plays uh and you know we kept the ball out of the paint last night a lot better than we had been okay christo solstice hello coach i have two questions for you the first one is how different approach we're gonna see tomorrow against the cavaliers about on about uh, the defensive end of your team and how different will gonna be your game plan without evan evan for me on the court yeah, so, I mean, at the defensive end, I mean, you know, again, it's going to be uh, – it'll be a lot of pick and rolls. It'll be a lot of drumming in the interior, you know, on duck-ins and high lows and running the floor. Uh, and if he gets the ball deep, I mean, you know, it's just – it's very difficult to deal with him. So, that's not something that's a one-man responsibility. That has to be team defense. And then, obviously uh, – you know, the pick and rolls, you know, it's not going to be just the two guys involved on the ball. It's going to be the three guys behind them also. And then, uh, I mean, obviously, I mean, as you know, you know, we rely on Evan. We utilize Evan in a lot of ways, you know, our pick and roll game, our catch and shoot offense. Um, and, uh, you know, it has, when you take a guy out, that's a primary scorer that you play through a lot, you know, it changes things for your team. Josh Robbins. Steve, when J.I. has missed time, uh, you and Pat have had a, 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 a structured way in terms of trying to get him up to speed with the intellectual side of the game. Uh, will you and is there enough time to do something similar with Chuma? Yeah, I think that, you know, we actually, you know, Lionel and I talked about that a little bit today. Um, some of it is we're doing research now the, the the travel part is we're trying to figure out, um, you know, normally, you know, those guys have traveled with us when they were hurt um, because, you know, they could work out just as well on the road as they could here at home. And it's not because of the pandemic and the rules we're living under. It's, it's not necessarily going to be as easy. So we're actually trying to figure out now, exactly what the best plan for Chuma will be. Josh, do you have a follow-up? Uh, no, no. Sorry. Okay. That's okay. Roy Perry? Steve, we know we got a chance to see uh, Kareem play on Thursday, and uh, I know you haven't had as much practice, but I'm just wondering what your, your impressions are of him after having seen him play a little bit more. I just love – I just love his – his attitude, who he is. I mean, he is tough as nails. Uh, he's a terrific worker. Um, and, you know, listen, he has a chance. Uh, you know, I mean, he is, uh, he can really defend. He can really defend the ball. Uh, I think he learns very quickly. Um, and I think, you know, like the, the bubble, the, the, the G league bubble will be ideal for him. You know, he needs a chance to go out and play and, you know, develop things offensively against, you know, obviously it will be a higher level of competition. Uh, but the other thing you got to love, I mean, he went right into the game the other night. I mean, there's no fear. I mean, you know, like he want, he wants to play and compete. 
and learn as he goes. And, and uh, I've been very impressed with him. Okay, and Christos Talstas. Coach, I would like, how do you evaluate uh, Dwayne Bacon's uh, performances so far in this, uh, in this season? And do you expect a more aggressive uh, face of, uh, of him? Uh, no, I actually, I've liked the way he played. I mean, you know, he didn't shoot the ball well last night, uh, but uh, his defense has been very good. And uh, I think that, again, I think he's trying to kind of blend in with the starters, you know, and, and find his spots. And, and what he's done is, is, you know, he puts pressure on the defense because of his ability to drive the ball and to score. So, um, no, I've been pleased with him. Any final questions for Coach Clifford? All right. Thanks, Cliff.